What's up everybody out there in YouTube land? Raft2501 here. Alright, so I got another, I did this before and it was I thought it was really cool. Uh, this is What If SCPs Were Superheroes and this is part two and this is by Pop Cross Studios. And I did the, the part one, that was really damn awesome, it looked really cool. So the ideas he had for the for the superheroes. So let's see what he's got one for this one. And uh, let's go. Back into another episode of SCPs as superheroes. Yep. And there's 682 awesome right there. The last episode, and considering how much fun I had making it, I figured I should do another one ASAP. So I went through the comments. I don't know what those are in the background. Though. What are those bunch characters? Of the awesome suggestions that you were all making, and I most heavily considered Dude. the ones that were getting suggested tons and tons of times. But I also <laughs> wanted to do some slightly more obscure ones that I figured could be really cool turned into superheroes. The term superheroes being yeah, used fairly loosely, to be fair. But I am going to start with the shy guy. Oh, is that Jar Jar Pinks? the most suggested. SCP in the last video. He's I like the most popular Martin, SCP. He suggested some really interesting ideas for the lore for this guy as a superhero that I ended Damn. up working into this video. Great ideas. I think you'll all like them. Let's get into them, though. Let's go. Hit like if you want. Subscribe if you feel like. But either way, enjoy the show. It's like the last one. Definitely like and sub to him. In the last vlog I made, I was detailing some of the most interesting hero files I've been granted access to. Now that I have love I like this. This is like a cold branch of off of the SCP universe. I love it. Soon after I finished that log, my place of work, Site-19, was attacked by a group that has always despised heroes and any who work with them, the Global Assault Coalition. Their Global goal is Assault to Coalition, and nice. all superpowered beings to ensure that humanity can live on, free from the so-called wrath of superhumans. I'd barricaded the room I was in, but some of the terrorists were working to smash down the door when a message came through all SCP agents secured headsets that said, all agents, for the next five minutes, close your eyes and do not open them for any reason. I followed the orders, knowing exactly what they planned to do. While I couldn't see the following events unfolding, I knew that they must have flashed an image on every single screen in the building of one of our more reluctant registered heroes. Reluctant. Case 096. Fifteen minutes after the message came through, still barricaded in the file room, I heard the unmistakable sounds of gunfire and ghoulish crying as the hero, Vigorshai, tore through every Vigershai? coalition surgeon who come into our stronghold. Vigorshai is an incredibly fast and strong and near invulnerable hero, but he also hates doing hero work. He lives in a cabin high on an isolated mountain in the Yukon. There he tries to live a peaceful life, alone, doing all he can to not let anyone see his face. The only time SCP agents have had in-person interactions with him, he's been wearing a full face mask. Ironically, something he only does while not doing hero work. Not see, doing hero work. someone who's committed any kind of immoral act over the last few weeks sees Vigershai's face, even if it's only a photo of him. His limbs begin to stretch out as his skin turns light gray. He grows claws and fangs, and his flesh becomes thick and leathery. In this new state, he becomes completely possessed with the need to kill the allegedly immoral person who's seen him before he can go back to living kill. his life as normal. He somehow becomes aware of their exact location, finds them, and ends them. He's all the more dangerous for the fact that it's difficult to gauge what you say this is will eats them. consider an immoral act. In most cases, when even an SCP agent has seen an image of his face, they've not lived long enough to confess whatever immoral act may have led them to receiving Vigorshai's wrath. What makes 096's case all the more unfortunate is he doesn't want to hurt anyone. He doesn't want to be a hero or a villain or anything, really. He simply wants to be left alone, which is why we've destroyed almost all images of him in existence. Except for the one image that we keep on file for dire cases like the one today, when we need to call on him to help protect the Foundation. Well, we try mm -hmm. to encourage heroes to capture instead of killing their foes, we sometimes have to make an exception, especially when it comes to the forces of the Assault Coalition. This may be a cold act for us to commit. Interesting also twist on the uh, Global Occult Coalition to kill, here, too. I like that. It ensures our work can continue unhindered, and that's something this world surely needs. With 
the assault handled, I was able Here to get go. back to studying hero files. And the next one I went to was a hero that I knew all too hero. well from reputation, <laughs> but whose files I'd never had access to until today. I mentioned in my last log, K682, also known as Regenizard. His real Regenizard? name is Anthony Pinnell, uh, and he doesn't kinda... answer to the hero name we've given him. Which I <laughs> suppose is fair given our history with this hard to kill superhuman. C682 has never held back against any criminal, killing every single one he's ever caught in an unjust act. He was one of the first cases we ever looked into for his brutality, and after many attempts to reason with him, to sway him to a less violent path, we finally decided he had to be handled. And that was when we realized just how hopeless of a mission that was. Anytime you attack Regenizard with something, he adapts to it, becoming stronger and stronger and more durable. We originally tried conventional weapons, and he spawned reptilian armor plating to protect himself. We tried lethal poison, and he at first seemed to die from it, but woke up not long after, and was never able to be injured by that same poison again. We then yeah. took more drastic action, capturing him and bringing him to this very site where we put him up against some of our other toughest heroes in the registry. We tried sending both Swift Sculpt and Vigorshy against him, but neither were able to kill him, and he quickly adapted to withstand all their attacks. After hours of battling, traumatized, Vigorshy covered his face and sprinted from the room, smashing through the door. This oh. unfortunately allowed Regenizard to escape, and we <laughs> since have been unable to get him back in custody. As uh -oh. I mentioned in my log on Hero 999, L8 was sent to him once and was able to have a respectful conversation with 682 and keep him calm throughout due to her powers and her incredibly upbeat demeanor. But from this, we only further learned how much they might be related. To despise the Foundation and all that we do. After the two parted ways, he soon after went back to his dark vigilante ways. Unfortunately, all we've managed to do with Regenizard is make him our enemy. Anytime heroes Very bad idea. ties to the Foundation end up in his city, he'll ruthlessly fight them off. We still have an active kill order on Regenizard, but it's unknown when or if we'll ever actually figure out a way to handle him. He's the Again, one that can make Michael drinks, as for some 682 some killer. I've collected information on the level 2 documents for 682 that I'm clearly not privy to about his origin and parentage. But I can only imagine, with the brute being this powerful his parentage. and unkillable, what must his parents have been like? Hmm. So actually, I find it interesting because like, he might be the brother to 999. That's interesting. That's very interesting. I like that. That's going to be a cool twist Next on the whole, hero who has this whole alternate universe. In a foundation site. She accepted this willingly because her biology can be damaging to natural surroundings, which goes in direct conflict of her goals. We first encountered Hero Case 811, aka Swamp Anne, in oh, a swamp, the swamp, the location the swamp of which girl. has been redacted. She was fighting against a group of bioterrorists who'd been hired by a major corporation to start a series of forest fires near Swamp Anne's home. The company had hoped that with the land burned, it would be easier for them to purchase to build Damn a factory on. Swamp Ann attacked the terrorists, apprehending most of them, but inadvertently killing two. She has largely been open to Foundation coaching to not kill her foes, and since this incident uh. has not killed any villains she's come into contact with. Swamp Ann's main goal is to protect the environment, which is hard for her because oh, along with they gave her frog eyes. amphibious body, or he she did. has the ability to excrete a dangerous mucus. It can burn her victims as well as stick them to any surface they interact with, making her particularly adept at capturing foes. Unfortunately, she sometimes excretes this mucus unintentionally, often in her sleep, Nasty. and it quickly kills any normal plant life that it comes into contact with. This leads to why she is in specialized foundation housing. Because of her biology, she prefers to live and sleep in a swamp-like setting. But living out in the wild can prove toxic to the very home that she longs to protect. Foundation researchers were able to use samples of her mucus to create hybrid plants that can survive and thrive in extended contact with Swamp Anne. We've built her a terrarium with these plants and she stays and? there, usually only leaving for missions we give her relating to bioterrorism. 
While she isn't particularly social and does prefer to be left alone, our few interviews with her have provided us the information that she used to be human, but was turned into an oh, amphibious cool. state by a that. man who we believe was her father, but have yet to confirm this fact. Her words also led us to believe that she killed the man, and that she longs to once more be a she normal him. human again. But, again, this is simply It'll our interpretation part. of what she said, as she quickly changes the subject any time it's broached with her. She may want to return to her former self, but I for one am said that she that, prefers to be called A. Now, we have a hero like her on our side, willing to fight to keep the green of our world safe. That's pretty good. Though the mucus is wrong. The mucus is supposed to be black, I believe. But, you know, artistic the license final and all, but today's still. final log is another of the heroes we provide specialized housing for. And oh, the boy. reasoning in this case is somewhat similar to that of Swamp Ann. Case 457, a.k.a. Infoblaze, is a being who oh. is perpetually on fire. <laughs> to stay alive, he consumes flammable Ow. objects, like a normal human would with food, and the Foundation supplies him with gasoline and wood. I remember this Admittedly one. in limited supply. This is because the more fuel he consumes, the stronger, larger, and more intelligent he becomes. These may sound like exclusively positive traits for a hero, but we at the I see you changed the design of the head right trust there. 457 with massive quantities of power. Like Swift Sculpt, Blaze is unpredictable with how lethal he'll be on missions, so we try to not allow him to reach unmanageable strength levels. Though he will often trick or sometimes persuade staff into providing him with more fuel. Blaze has <laughs> on missions in the past taken time to consume materials in his objective surroundings, but luckily we've given him a super suit to manage his potential overpowering. We told him part of the truth of the suit, that it protects part parts of, of his flaming body from water and fire dousing attacks. But unknown to him, it also allows us to regulate his strength levels to a certain degree. If he gets too powerful, we can subtly absorb and suppress some of the flames to weaken him. So far, he has shown no signs of knowing that the suit can suppress his powers. Along with Dick an move, guys. to Dick shoot move. flames, Infoblaze can also transform his body into alternate flaming forms. While he often takes on the shape of a human, he can also change into an animal-like form, or turn parts of his body into flaming weapons like swords or hammers, which he'll often do when facing tougher villains. It was recently flaming discovered hammer. that Blaze is <laughs> actually one of a few beings like himself, as he was sent on a mission to help contain a forest fire by absorbing the flames. There it was found that the fires were caused by another being with his same powers. He vigorously attacked the opponent and seemed to have a personal vendetta against them, as he fought oh, interesting and putting that little bit in the entire flaming being into himself, seemingly killing them. Afterwards, when interviewed about the incident, he refused to comment on the matter and simply went back to his fireproof housing. He may not be our most law-abiding hero, but he's certainly one who serves as an asset in the Foundation's endeavors. That's very cool. I like how he alters their stories a little bit to, like, kind of fit in there. Very clever. I hope we see more I'm of these, because really as of this, this series. up to this, he's only done do these two. I don't know if I'll jump into another one as quickly as I jumped into this one. And, I mean, there's plenty of do other more. stuff with SCPs on the channel. But you can bet there's going to be an episode three to this eventually. And, by the way, a lot of my SCP superhero inks are going to be available in an ink bundle that I just put in. Okay. Okay, so he's advertising shit here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's about it. Anyway, so, okay, so, ah. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I love this. This is very cool, and yeah, so I can't recommend it enough, guys. Definitely click on the link to the original down in the description. Get down to Pop Cross Studios' channel, like the original video, and sub to him. He apparently sells other stuff like inks, like oh, pictures and stuff like that. Uh, some t-shirts, it looks like, and stuff, so you can look at that. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to me before you go. Like this video and help me to grow, guys. Help me to reach that 100,000 subscribers. And I will see you guys next time. Tune in every day for new content. Bye-bye.